you have any idea how weird you are. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option. Coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoy. If you like our work so far, would you consider hitting the subscribe button, please? We really need that particular support. It costs you nothing. Chuck us a few quid if you want on Patreon or PayPal. Keep the comments coming. For goodness sake, will you keep us in the prayers and keep us in your masses? Second Sunday of Lent. And here we have this this theme of the disruption of the everyday or rather the eruption of heaven into the everyday and what do we see in that first reading from Genesis we see that famous scene where God says to Abram leave your country your family your father's house and go go into the land that I will show you leave all the dear and familiar and become a freak become a stranger Become a wanderer. Become one who does not belong initially. Who does not initially belong. And start something new. And I will lead you to glory. So the glory will be preceded by that loneliness. That response to God. That going out from what is dear and familiar that handing over of that tatty, beloved old teddy bear that is everything that you find reassuring and going out to start again. And then in the gospel, the transfiguration. Can you imagine what it was like to see that? Can you imagine how frightening it was to see that? Beauty can actually have a frightening edge to it. You remember Yeats' line about the terrible beauty? All is changed, changed utterly. Go out from what you know. And then the the revelation, the revelation of the inexpressible beauty of Jesus Christ to the followers who thought they knew him. Lent is the time for distrusting the familiar, including that which has so far proved its worth. And so we give up something that is perfectly good in itself. Not because we hate it, but because we we are called every year to put ourselves back into the shoes of Abram. To go out from our father's house. We are confronted every year with the true terrible beauty of our nature in Christ. I'm going to say to you straight out. The world you're in is not friendly to you. I'm not saying this to start some some paranoid nonsense. I'm not saying this to to glorify the ghetto. I'm not saying this to wrap you in conspiracies and frighten the life out of you with Freemasons hiding under the bed and probably communists as well. And I'm not saying it for any of those reasons. I'm just saying you're weird and the world will persecute you. So you have to learn to carry it. Wear your penance slightly. Move confidently in the world. Choose to whom you talk. Use your judgment. Be careful. We are going to have to be more skilled now than we have had to be in this country for centuries in terms of the apostle. A wrong word and you've lost somebody. And furthermore got a reputation for being a religious nut. Show your beauty at the wrong time and to the wrong person. And no, I'm not talking about taking all your clothes off and streaking down the main street. Okay. Show the the terrible beauty of your nature 
or worse still, show somebody else the terrible beauty of their nature when they're not ready for it and not... Uh, one false move here and you've lost somebody. This is, we're in a very tricky place and we have to start again. This is a great time this Lent to, to remind ourselves of where we are in Ireland at the moment. It's an awful thing to say to people in their own country. You're not among friends. I, I don't know any other way to put this. And if you say to me, oh, you're being paranoid, I, I'm sorry. I think the evidence is overwhelming. Paranoids live in a world of their own making, as it were. They, they interpret everything in a particular way. I think if you look at the evidence around us, it's absolutely clear we don't belong, we're not wanted and we're not liked. So you have to take that into account. You know the way there are very popular films in the last, what is it, 20 years? about superheroes. And I think a lot of those are based on the Marvel comics, aren't they? Never really took to the Marvel comics, I must say. I was reared on the English comics, on Beano and Dandy and Beezer and all those. I, 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 I just, I, I was exposed to the Marvel comics as a boy, but didn't take to them. But I find it interesting that the world is still intrigued by the idea that people may be walking among us who have these remarkable powers and who have to try to, to conceal them. And I'm telling you that that fascination is not misplaced and that that superhero is you. And I'm not saying it to flatter you because I'm telling you something that is a cross and a burden as well. So, for this Lent, I just wanted to lift your spirits and remind you that you are in certain respects in the middle of a pool of reasonably well-fed piranha. And the best you can do is hope that they won't get peckish before you manage to get out of it. Be careful how you go. Deepen your faith. Build your skills. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Don't underestimate this culture. Don't disrespect it. Don't be foolish. I'm not asking you to be sly. I'm asking you to be wise. And I do think there's a difference. But be clear on one thing. And I'm sorry to say this to you. You must abandon what you have known. It will not be enough for the journey. You must trust in God. And that's very much my message to you this land. Do not put your trust in what you have known up to now. I'm not talking about the faith. I'm not talking about God. But I'm talking about the details, the details, the social, the social, sociological, the political details of our lives. No, no, you can't trust it. We're on a journey. Now we'll get there with God's help and not without you're going to need a lot of prayer, a lot of faith, a lot of sacrifice, and that's only to open yourself to the strength of God to do this work, because you are going to need remarkable gifts from the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel in a society which regards it with, at best, contemptuous tolerance and, at worst, horrified aversion. I fully understand if you don't want, if you, if, you, if you don't think you can manage it. You're quite right. You can't manage it. But he can manage it. So I want you for now just to realise how beautiful, how powerful, how remarkable, how grace-filled, how formidable he has made you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.